Gather round everyone, Vegeta vs Frost, the ultimate retribution match coming to us now! For exactly five seconds. That's right everyone, Dragon Ball Super Episode 35, after a week's break, is now back on our screens. Was it worth the wait? Well, uh, well, let's find out, shall we? Turn anger into power, Vegeta's all-out battle. Which, coincidentally, is the title of Vegeta's upcoming autobiography. I got to say, that this episode makes Vegeta look so cool. There are so many angles and shots of Vegeta just looking badass and just like saying, I'm not gonna take any of your crap here. I'm just gonna beat you senseless. I'm gonna kill you. I'm just gonna have no holds barred, no holding back. And what do we get after that? Well, um... Holy shit. That was so cool! That shot was so cool, I'm gonna give this anti-climax a pass. So, I hope that you do too, cause... Damn! As we all suspected, since Piccolo was technically allowed to rejoin the tournament due to Frost's cheating, Goku's allowed to rejoin the fray. And, it actually leads up to some intrigue, because, in theory, Vegeta should be followed by Monarca, but Beerus is really hesitant about letting Monarca go after him. So actually having Goku go instead after Vegeta. Why is Beerus hiding Monarca? Is he that powerful that he actually scares Beerus and only wants him to fight when he has to? Or is he hiding some kind of trap that Monarca is just there as a ploy to make Goku think there's someone stronger even though there are not? Or he could be just merely a vessel so that means Beerus can fight through him. It's all speculation for the moment, but I'm actually thinking there's probably a lot more to the guy's nipples than meets the eye. Before we move on to the next bit, I have to admit that this angle here kind of makes Frost look like he's either on a sun lounger or he's got a really bad back problem. It's probably just bad animation in that kind of sense, but hey, I think my other theories are funnier. In all this, Shampert continues to be the world's worst little brother by actually changing the rules and actually acting a secondary barrier on the pretense that it means that it won't break because we've had the barrier break twice now, playing into the part of Shampa's next combatant. But as this is all happening, Frost gets iced. In all this fuss, Hit breaks his silence and decides to break Frost's body as well in the process. He's not gonna let Frost get away with the cube, which is apparently what his reward would be from Shampa if they won, but it's not really enough to say whether he's a good guy or not, or he's just kind of just doing this for the money and the cool toy. I'd want that cube. So we get an idea about what Hit's powers are. He can sort of stop time or change dimensions enough to the point to manifest certain kind of energy pockets on bodies to kind of almost paralyze them, not quite kill, but it was enough to kind of incapacitate Frost and he's no longer a threat at all. I really wish Frost wasn't a jerk. I really want him to be a good guy. I'm still sad about that. But we mustn't dawdle. We have Vegeta's next battle with Mageta, the big robot, who drinks f***ing lava. That's metal as hell. Uh... This may be as weird as hell, but I love it. We haven't had a full-on robot battle in the whole Dragon Ball franchise since, well, the original Dragon Ball with the whole Red Ribbon army and whatnot. Mageta is, um... Not exactly a mute, but he kind of goes bah, 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 like he's full of hot air. Which he kind of is because he's just basically a walking furnace who drinks f***ing lava. So when it comes to the title of the all-out battle, it's not necessarily Frost. It's actually Mageta. Because Vegeta let slip earlier that he wasn't actually using all of his power. And we know that because he wasn't going Super Saiyan Blue. Again, he was going Super Saiyan 1. As he does for Mageta at the beginning. But... This cube is actually to the advantage of Mageta because he could basically just boil himself up and sweat Vegeta into a coma or something. Just incapacitating him using heat. All in all, this episode actually kept me engaged. And was it worth a week's break? Um, kind of not. But hey, I'll take it because it was good enough. Frost's arc may be done for now, but hey, it was a good run of like, what, two episodes maybe? But hey, we have something. The totally not Freezer clone. Whether Hit's the big bad or not in this arc remains to be seen. We haven't actually seen enough of it, but we've actually seen something so he can talk. So yeah, Hit can talk! Woo! And that's the biggest thing we can take from this episode. But yeah, guys, what did you think of episode 35? Leave a comment and tell me what you thought about it. I'm always keen to know. And if you want to keep up with these reviews as they keep going, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more updates. 
And just a bit of a side note, I just opened up my P.O. box. Uh, so if you want to be sending me something, be it fan art or a letter or whatever, just check the description for the address. So anyway, guys, take care of yourselves and let's wait until next week. Until then, guys, catch you later.